All right, take a look at this lamp. You think you can design it? This was actually a lamp at a hotel I was staying in while visiting Savannah, Georgia. I find myself doing this often, seeing an interesting design and having my mind go straight to Fusion 360 and thinking of a design strategy. I ended up designing it and then gave the challenge to my weekly online Fusion 360 class. And I thought I would share that challenge with you here as well. But instead of doing a separate video, I thought I would simply share the live class with you because I think many of you would enjoy it. And so I got permission from my students to give you a sneak peek on what goes on in these live classes. I took an entire class recording and edited it down a bit for you since the entire class is about an hour and a half. Um, but I kept enough of it in so that you can see the entire format of the class. If you want to jump straight to the design challenge, I have the uh, timestamps below. Um, but I think you should watch the entire thing. We usually start with some general discussion. Most times it has to do with some aspect of 3D printing, but we also discuss other forms of fabrication, such as laser cutting and other CNC machines. Then we transition to specific Fusion 360 questions that students have on models they're working on, and I'll bring up their designs and help them get unstuck. If there are no questions, I'll either do a lesson or a design challenge. One thing I've started doing that students really enjoy is giving them a design challenge and then separating them into teams in different breakout rooms to solve the challenge. And after 15 minutes, they come back and we get to see everyone's approach before I end up showing them the approach I would take. That's what you're going to see today. So when we get to the design challenge, what I would like you to do is to pause the video when the students go into the breakout rooms and give the model an attempt yourself. Then continue the video to see if your design approach matched any of theirs or even my approach. After showing my design approach and answering any questions, we always end with a show and tell. This is the part of the class where students get to show what they've been working on. I really love this part because you get to see the creativity of the group and be inspired by what everyone's making. Make sure to not skip this part. It's the last section and it's well worth it. If you like what you see here and are interested in joining my weekly live class, I've left a link below with more details. I currently have 27 students enrolled and have room for a few more students. The group is small enough that you get personalized help and you'll see for yourself that it's just a really great community of wonderful creative people. We meet every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. All right, let's jump right in. Uh, the resin is, is picky stuff. We call it goop and it goes everywhere and it gets everywhere and it's very particular and uh, gloves and napkins and everything are your best friend. <laughs> and but the detail, detail is really nice. <laughs> are you regretting going along that line? <laughs> Only when I sit here and listen to all the filament discussion. <laughs> 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 but I'm getting a filament printer of my own, and I have one at the makerspace that I work at, so it's not bad. The, the big thing about resin is the detail. The detail is really, really good. So that's why John wants more people to join the resin team. They it's can resin team. that discussion. <laughs> it's the resin. Uh, Trevor, is there um, anything particular you're looking to design that you feel you've hit the limitation of uh, FDM? Yeah, it was it was this thing here where the um, uh, where, where do we look? Um, this thing here is the cage. Everything is dimensionally perfect, but if uh -huh. if you look at the, um, the the lattice things there. Yeah. They're very jagged. And I thought, yeah. well, this won't be the end of my miniature making. Uh, maybe I should be looking at the resin solution where there's no stress at all. Gotcha. Yeah, so the, the looks of that looks like you printed that upright. So when it Indeed. did the, the X, I guess that's why it's a little bit jaggy. So let's jump into today. Today, let me see. Let me start with, uh, I want to do some highlights, um, just a few Facebook highlights from projects I want to show here. And then uh, it seemed like uh, the breakout rooms with the design challenges, um, you know, seem to, you guys seem to enjoy that. So we're going to try that again today. I have a new design for you um, that we're going to do. And so uh, we'll jump into that in a minute. But first, let me show... Okay, so I want to show some of this stuff. Like, have you guys seen um, some of Cheryl's work here in the group? 
uh, really amazing what she's doing. She does dollhouse miniatures. And she's using, uh, well, in this model here, um, she's using uh, 3D printing for the lamps here uh, and the lights, which uh, pretty amazing. So in this post, she kind of talks about the LEDs that she uses and has a link to it. Um, one of the neat things I commented on the brick seems to be like the theme here the, uh, of the month, but the brick wall. And I thought she just ordered these um, online, but turns out she she in the reply she actually links to a little tutorial she did where she uses uh, egg crates and, and and that's how she gets the texture of the brick wall which i thought was, was pretty cool so i guess not everything has to be 3d printed but uh, it's really neat uh, if you want to follow the link there and see how she did that it looks so realistic and then she has uh, another one here uh, and you kind of see the amazing work she's doing there, all this. I mean, some of you guys commented here, that th like you thought this was a rendering, which, <laughs> you know, could definitely see why the, um, the work she's doing here. So, yeah, now she's uh, incorporating 3D printing a lot into her, her dollhouse work. So really cool stuff she's doing there. Okay, Van, you posted on this documentary, the uh, MakerBot. That, actually, I've seen that, I think it was a few years ago. It's actually really interesting especially when you see like a documentary of like, you know, what you like, you were there at that time, like, and well, at least for me, like I was following it all along. So it's, it's actually uh, pretty neat seeing how, you know, MakerBot and cause they were pretty much the first ones to kind of, uh, you know, sort of lead the 3D printing um, movement that, you know, that spur out of the whole rep rap movement. The cupcake. Uh, yeah, the cupcake, yes. <laughs> a little kit that you would build. Uh, oh, I think the first was the Thingomatic. And I'm sure, did the cupcake come as a kit? I can't remember. Yeah, it came as a kit. Uh, yeah, yeah. It only took us six months to put it together. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so let's jump into today's challenge. And let's see, I'm going to bring up my Fusion 360 here. And so today's challenge is actually, it comes from a design and uh during my trip and this was uh in the hotel there was this, this lamp and it was a neat just a neat shape to it and i thought ah design challenge <laughs> you know um, where you see something and you i kind of do this a lot where i'll see something and say ah i wonder wonder how it would be to design that or like i'm pretty sure i could make that um so let me let me show you let me share my screen here and I'll bring up the picture, but I also went ahead and designed it in Fusion, um, just so, because the pictures you know, um, don't make it, it's not so obvious to see what it's doing. So let me go ahead and share my desktop here. So let me show this first here. So this is the, um, this is the lamp and you can see, let me go back. So this is like just a, si a side profile here. So you kind of got these triangles going in the front. And then I did a top, which you've kind of got like this um, square top. So I went ahead and quickly just hopped into Fusion to create it. And then so here's the design. And I'll just kind of show it a little bit. And then I'll also do this. Let me go ahead and just I'm going to right click and uh, share public link. I'm going to throw that in the chat for you. And that way you can kind of. Um, have it and move it around and so when we break out into rooms you'll be able to uh, to kind of move this around and see it but let me see it so you don't have to design the whole thing I just kind of um, me break me remove the lampshade I'm mainly concerned about um, just this part here I want you to go ahead and tackle this like how would you approach this this Can sort of the bottom design? okay like well, that wow that's that's like an optical illusion because it looks like a <laughs> hexagon on the bottom until you show it and it's a square. Yeah, exactly. And you can see the top here. And then if I rotate this. So yeah, take all your mental notes right now. And then let me throw that on the chat here. I'm just going to throw the link where you can grab it. But yeah, so go ahead. We're going to do, I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes today to go ahead and, and just tackle this. Like I said, this is, the, this is the whole thing, but don't worry about the rest of it. Um, just do that base part of it. And uh, 
Yeah, any questions? Nope. All right. So let me break into rooms. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to split you guys up into breakout rooms. I'll do four breakout rooms. Uh, we'll do 15 minutes and I'm going to, I'll hop in between different breakout rooms just to see how everyone's doing. And then we'll come back and then look at the different approaches. Uh, oh, what I want you to do too, I'd say before like jumping right in to design it, just take a minute or two to just kind of go around. Um, there's going to be between three and four participants per room. So just uh, discuss a little bit on, on the approach um, you would take. So get it, kind of everybody's input on the design approach um, and then, then you know, pick one person to go ahead and design it while everyone gives their feedback and, uh, or, or directions. And then, uh, then we'll come back and meet again to look at your different approaches and I'll show the approach I would take. So, all right, I'm gonna create the rooms. Ooh, don't tell me you did it in two steps. Uh, no, we're, I'm still, I'm still messing around with it. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's not doing what I think it's supposed to be doing. I think we got it, but I don't know if this is the approach that he's going to show us. So, oh, all right, how'd it go? That was fun. Yeah, <laughs> I think we did it. Did it? All right. I think so too. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, Anyone else think they got no, it? I wanted to be no. on their team. <laughs> <laughs> it was all Larry. We got stuck. <laughs> oh, we yeah. stuck first, and then then I had an epiphany. Yes, he did. Okay. Shall we, shall we display? Well, shall so we show? since you guys think you got it, I'm going to save you for last. Ah. You got it. I like it. <laughs> all right. Let's let's go to, uh, let me see, room two. We've got Frank, Brian, Dean, and Kayvon. You guys want to? Show us your, your approach. Sure. Um, I think we got it, but. Oh, they think they got it. We have gone the easy way. I don't know. I, I, so. That looks like it. You, you see our screen? Yep. That, yeah, that looks, that looks it. Let's see. Um, expand your bodies there on your browser. Almost. You're almost there. You've got surfaces. You don't have a body. But I thought we did a patch panel, so we gotta we gotta bring it back. Well, you you interrupted us. Sorry, so we should have gone back in the solid. Uh, I don't know. Okay, we got surfaces. So I've forgotten that step. Uh, how we gotcha. Okay, but no, that's that's good. You guys got you're pretty much there. Let's just do a quick run through your timeline and see how you approached it. All right. So did a square uh, sketch. Uh -huh. And then did a loft. Uh, I don't know. I can't see it for some reason. Uh, turn on your oh, your construction. There you go. Uh, um, no, that's just a offset plane. Okay. Yeah, we did an offset plane. I'm sorry. We didn't do a loft. I guess that was my misspoke. And then did a, another sketch on top, uh, rotated it. Looks like you've got a 3D sketch there. Yes. Then we turned on 3D and connected all these points. And then went into the surface environment and did a patch. And that's as far as we got. Okay. So one sketch at the bottom, and then you did a construction plane on top where you created yes. a, a top sketch. You did another square. It looks right. like you rotated. Did you do a rotate rotated, on that top square? We did. We rotated this at 45 degrees. Okay. And then you turned on 3D sketch and connected the, uh, the triangles. That's what we did. I'm okay. pretty sure that's not the approach you're going to show us, but that was... Oh, the yeah, easy you're approach. Pretty, you're pretty much there. Um, That's the way we started. Okay, good. But yeah. So the problem somewhere. with that, click um, untoggle the, um, a few of those surface bodies. There. Um, you mean turn them off? Yeah. And then just go ahead, and then you kind of start to see how those are made up of surface patches. So yeah. So the next step was really to stitch all those together to get a body. But yeah, really, uh, you're pretty much there. Um, good. Good job, guys. Figured it out. Um, so is that the part you got stuck on? Were you, what were you going to do next? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Anybody oh, you're saying else? we should have used the stitch command as opposed to patch? Is that what you would have done? No, yeah, in addition. In addition, okay. Yeah. So we would have done the patch and then a stitch. Yeah, so you were trying to figure out at that point how to, how to combine all those surfaces 
um, surface bodies into one solid body. Right, that's when the class ended. So yes, sure, yeah. thing ended. So we couldn't figure that out yet. Yes. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, that's good. Um, okay, so let's go to room three. We've got Brandon, Jackie, Trevor, and Ed. Yeah, so we were we were close and actually kind of did the same thing. Created a um, offset plane and rotated the sketch the square 45 degrees and I went into 3D mm. sketch and connected all the points. And then for some reason we were talking about, well, first tried a loft and that wasn't working. Um, we ended up with something that yeah, was kind of, here. I don't know, just, it just wasn't lining up right. And then we talked about surface and I was just, when I just saw it there, mm. when, for some reason, when I went into surface and tried to patch it, chaining was turned on so when i selected everything it, i couldn't get it i couldn't get it to select and i just realized if i had to turn off chaining i could have done it so that probably would have been the if i would have figured that out it, we, then we could create the patches here and get there um so yeah right and i uh i made the model for our oh group. cool you want to share it i'll uh since you're done, I will cancel this. Hold on, hold on, Ned. Before you yeah. before you go, I just want to um, show you one of the issues you're having there. Go ahead and expand all your sketches on your browser. Okay. Um, okay. So. Because I'm not fully defined on this one. Not... No, you you've okay. got a profiler. So uh, your first sketch, you've got a first sketch, and then you've got a construction plane, a second sketch, and then. Your third sketch there, is that when you went to, into 3D sketching? Yes. Okay, go ahead and open up that third sketch. Okay, you see so how I just, you... I connected the, the corner, each, you know, the corners to each other to create the... Yeah, take a line and, and, and redraw that line on that top um, square that's closing. This one? That. Yeah, just go ahead and... And you see how it's a little lighter? No, no, not. Oh, draw, redraw the square. Exactly. Ah. Yeah, Brian caught that right away and told us to do that. And that's how we fix ours. Yeah. So the issue there is you're not getting a close profile because you're missing. Oh, so I need to do it on both squares then. It's not they're... on the same sketch. Yeah. It's okay. Over there. And that's, that's, that's the part you needed there. Got it. So now you I can... don't do a lot of 3D sketching, so I wasn't. Yeah. So now you're saying if I go to create the patch, even with chain selected, it should work. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got yeah. it. It's a lot easier when you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And and, so, and sometimes it's just that you were just missing one, one key element there is that you didn't have a complete profile. You had two lines and not a closed off section. So so those light gray profiles I was seeing from the other sketches is what threw me off that if I would have closed those off, then it right. would have, okay. Yeah, and the issue is you created those in separate sketches and then you went into 3D sketch. So when you go into 3D sketch, they don't come in to close. Like even if you're referencing part of other sketches, it doesn't consider it part of that sketch. Got so it. it doesn't close the profile. Okay. Okay, good. But I see you were trying a loft approach there. So next, yeah, time. and loft wasn't working. I thought I could, you know, use these three D sketch lines as rails, um, but it, it was still creating kind of a warped uh, side instead of a flat one. Gotcha. Okay, good. Yeah. So you guys also, you were just like close, almost, almost there, close. Um, okay, so now we will go to oh room four. Let's go. This was just a three-person group, Boo, Lloyd, and Kit. Okay, well, we were trying the same approach. Mm -hmm. um, and then I made the mistake of uh, thinking I had rotated the square at the top of 45 degrees, and I hadn't. So I was going, we were in the middle of going back and fixing that up. So we really don't have anything to show yet, but that was the same approach as everybody else was using at the two squares at the 45 degree angle and then connect the points. Uh, okay, so you did the the two sketches, um, right? And you just you didn't rotate the top one, and we you did, were trying to connect. Right. Them. And right. you didn't so, go to three D sketch to try to make the, uh, or were you still sticking to different sketches? Oh, we hadn't we hadn't gotten beyond we hadn't gotten the top one rotated yet when we when I realized it wasn't rotated. So okay. I thought I had, and I hadn't. So 
Gotcha. Okay, cool. I got it done during our little chat. We'll afterwards do. Oh, you got it there. All right. Oh, there. <laughs> there it is. Cool. Um, okay, so let's go to room one now, which is Mike, Irv, Larry, and John. Let's see how you guys did it. All right, let's see what we got. Come on. Look at that. We even got uh, appearances ah. applied. Guys well, I'm have... not allowed to work after the class. Starts, <laughs> so I, I didn't. I promise. My hands never touched the keyboard or mouse. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> default um, appearance is wood. Default appearance is wood because I do a lot of wood. So that's why I have default appearance is wood. Um, so we started out uh, with the thought of two sketches, two planes, and a 45 degree rotated and tried to do 3D sketching and quickly realized that that wasn't going to work as quickly as we wanted. And then Larry goes, think like a machinist. And so we stepped back in the timeline. And basically, this is what we did. We uh, created, created a sketch. Mm -hmm. We extruded it with a 10 degree taper angle. Mm -hmm. Then I created midpoints. After we created the midpoints, we created a plane through, oh, wow. through three points. Mm -hmm. We used that to cut the body. We applied a circular pattern and then cut the main body and voila. Wow. Okay. Whole different approach here. I like it. The whole, uh, the whole machinist mentality, start with a block <laughs> and trim it away. Right. Yeah. yeah good. That's good. Yeah. All right. A lot of wood got wasted and thrown out. <laughs> that is true. Luckily we're working virtually, so it's not an issue. <laughs> Cool. Nice work. Okay, so you guys took a completely different approach than everyone else, um, but I like it. I like to see uh, the, the sort of different ways of thinking about it. Um, good. Anyone have has any questions on, on their approach here? We've got. Uh, so, why did you need to taper that? I mean, could you have done it if you just? I guess I'm missing the step there where you you actually extruded that and you put a taper on it, correct? Well, if you didn't taper it, the top would be smaller than the bottom. Oh, I see. Okay. So since you're just cutting it, okay, I got it now. Right. Okay. So if we bring back that construction plane and I rotate it and we look at it from completely the right side, or if we do a 45, uh, this, no, this, <laughs> there. Did your top square end up equaling the size of the I bottom square? Doing I don't think way? so. We were going to adjust that. Yeah, because I that'd be yeah. the only thing I could see where you just want to make sure you yeah we had them yeah we figure out the angle dimension. or extrude it far enough so right. it matches. Right. Yep. So uh, aren't they the same there. size or not? So this one uh, ended up being so. two sixteen, and this one ended up being two hundred. Yeah, so it ended mm -hmm. up being a little bit larger on the top. Oh. Go back right before the circular pattern on the timeline. So, and okay, now go up one, go right, uh, go right after the pattern. Yeah, and open up the pattern feature. Let me, let me take a look at that. So you're taking, what is your object there? That's just that one side there. One body, just one, one body. body. Yeah. yeah. So after the split, you take that one body and then you're doing a... And I'm using the axis that I had drawn right. uh, originally here. Oh, interesting. So now, yeah, so you're adding onto the, the block. Right. right. Cool. Right, I wondered cool. whether we could rotate the split. I'm, I'm sure we could have done a feature this way, possibly. It looks like it. Yeah, that looks like it. Yeah. That's what yeah, I that would have worked too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then you combined everything. Yep. Okay, nice. Cool. 
I was going to say it was genius, but since the top and bottom don't match, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you almost you didn't have it, all man. the time. You know, not have all the time in the world to figure out all the math. You know, <laughs> especially when we did it twice. There you exactly. Go. That, that was fun watching. I, I tap into the different rooms and it's like seeing everyone when you're like, oh, you're so you're so close. You're so close. <laughs> I was like, I'm muted, but I was like, I'm yelling at the <laughs> a little bit to the right. <laughs> but cool. Um, yeah, well done. That was uh, that was good. We've got, the, you know, those who you didn't quite get it done, but you pretty much were almost there. The the technique I took was kind of more in line with the other three groups. I didn't approach this in a machinist mentality by starting with the block and chipping it away, but I'll share my screen and let me just, uh, I'll go through, through my design. I'll just kind of go through it really quickly. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, just jump in. So basically I came in, yeah, with a sketch here, uh, center rectangle. And the dimensions didn't matter here. But I'll just go with 100 by 100, make that square. And then same approach you guys took with creating that uh, offset plane. So I'm going to come in with that offset plane here and then uh, let's say go up around like 200. Created that sketch right on that plane there. And again, we're going to come in with that uh, rectangle, center rectangle. And same thing. But here's you know the difference here, which many of you again did do, which is I just rotated it. Um, so right click, move copy, and then I'm gonna set the pivot here, this little pivot button right on the center. You have to remember to click this little check mark to lock it in place. And now I just can go ahead and take that 45 degrees, click okay. You will notice that it's not constrained, it's blue. Um, and one way, if you want it fully defined, um, you can do that is just draw a line straight out, I'll make that a construction line and then set a uh, horizontal constraint to that line. And that actually ends up constraining it. Um, you can put an angle here to double check that that is 45 degrees. It's gonna tell me it's over constrained now, but just a way of verifying that you have that constrained and at the right angle. So at this point we've, yeah, right. We've got this, um, you know, this base and this top. And I feel like once you kind of gotten that, like if you can see that, and this is basically where it is. You start with the square bottom and you also have a square top. And the difference is that the square top is rotated um, so that if you look at it, the point is going to line up with um, this straight edge here with that midpoint of that. And I can see sort of the temptation here to go with loft because um, you're kind of going from one shape to another. Uh, however, the approach I took here is, um, you know, I've heard some of you guys mention that it kind of resembles, uh, I believe it was a dodecahedron uh, model that I did. Um, so if you recall that, where we kind of um, created a shape and then jumped into 3D sketch. Uh, now there's ways you can do this without 3D um, sketching, but I, I felt like this was really the best way here. Um, so, uh, or one of, you know, uh, an efficient way, I should say. So I'm going to create a sketch and because I'm going to go into 3D sketching, you can go ahead and just choose any sketch plane. It doesn't matter because we're just going to come here and click the 3D sketch button. And at this point, we can just now start connecting lines, right? So what you want to do is make these triangles. So from edge to edge back here, and this is the point um, you know, that you kind of needed to also realize is you have to then retrace this line here to give you that profile. And all I'm going to do here, I'm, I'm actually, I'm just going, going to make two of these because then I'm just going to rely on that, my circular pattern to do the rest. But at this point, I've got these three profiles or four, I should say the top, the two sides here and the bottom pretty much have everything I need. And now I'm going to go into my surface environment and go to create and down to patch. And I can simply select on each of these profiles. As long as you have a closed profile, you can patch it. And that creates a surface body. It's like almost like a sheet of paper, right? It's just, there's no thickness to it. It's just, it's called a surface. Um, and now I can come in and create a circular pattern here. And I can do these both at the same time. Let me just do them separately just to kind of, cause it'll make it easier to see what I'm doing. I'll choose this triangle here. My axe is going to be the center here, which I can choose because I chose a center uh, rectangle there. And then I'm just going to make four of these and you'll see I've got these 
you know, these triangles here, four of these that point upwards. And now I just need to make the bottom ones here, the ones that point to the bottom. And I'll just repeat that circular pattern, select it here. Uh, actually make sure I got only one selection. My axis again, same thing here and make four of those and then click okay. And there's that. Uh, but like I said, I could have just made that instead of doing it twice, I could have gone objects and just chose both of them. I just wanted to do a separate there. All right, and now you have these uh, surface patches, right? So they're not a body yet. And at this point, um, all you have to do is go to modify and go down to stitch. And when you go to skits to stitch, it's a lot easier if you just select them here on your browser. So click on one, hold shift, click on the last one. You'll see everything sort of get this green outline, click okay. And now you've turned all those surface patches into a 3D body. So if I go into back to my solid and I do an inspection uh, section analysis here, you know, I can kind of make sure that that's a solid body. Um, and I feel like if you do a shell, you kind of get a better idea of what's happening here. Let me shell the top and bottom and click OK, and you kind of see that shape. Um, I didn't have you do this. It was a solid piece, but just kind of felt it kind of showed that interior geometry of what's happening. Um, so yeah, so that that's the approach I took. Um, you know, at, um, at least uh, the three out of you, out of the four group, those who... Um, besides our, our machinist group, you kind of, you know, this is the approach basically you, you went with this, you figured out it was two squares, one rotated the other way. Um, you did the offset plane, um, you know, and then uh, just some of you got stuck on when how to approach the 3D sketch, make sure you close those profiles. And uh, we don't use the patch, the surface workspace too much. So I could see why I can get, I got a little uh, sort of blurry there on what to do with patching and stitching, but uh, but that's the approach. Uh, any questions? We, we kind of started off that way, Vladimir, but I think what happened is when um, Michael had the, the top, the, once we had the top one, uh, we tried the 3D sketching. I don't think we had it constrained, so it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't sticking to anything. I think that was the issue that we had. Yep, that sounds pretty much right. Oh, so was it turning on you? You didn't? You might have accidentally turned it because um, you could still no, reference the, it. The line, the line just seemed to keep going on its own path. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's the thing. Um, let me go back right here. When you're doing that, um, you're doing the 3D sketch here. You do have to be careful. Um, so I've got 3D sketch on. You want to make sure you actually snap to these corners and you can, you notice here when I put the, the cursor over, I get this little, um, you know, this little square above it showing me that it's, it's snapping to that. Um, you can also probably might be a good idea to do, let's see, snap to grid off so you don't get confused because you notice how it'll still give me like on each grid here, it'll snap, but it might, in that case, if you do it here, you might think you've, you're snapping to a corner and you might be snapping to a grid. Um, but yeah, so that's the main thing you have to be careful with because if I do something like this, let me say I want, I want to continue the rest of this and I grab this corner here and then let's say I want to come here. But if I don't quite get there and I go like right here, you know, and then I try to do something here, like you start to see how that line, where it ends up, it becomes really unpredictable where it's going to go, what plane is, is it going to go into. Um, so that's why you want to make sure, and it can that can be, you know, can easily happen. So if I'm coming in and you want to make sure you're actually snapping right on those endpoints. So another way I could have approached this is I could have just drawn this whole thing out here, right? Like I could have just connected all the rest of these. And as long as I'm being careful, then I'm snapping right to those uh, to those uh, points here, referencing the actual design. You know, it'll work out fine. And then I can just come in and I can retrace that bottom square. So, so Vladimir, do you need a third intermediary plane, or can you do it in one? 
Uh, you could do it in one, actually. It was just easier in this case to create that bottom plane, do an offset uh, plane and create this. So you have two squares and then rotate the square. And then, but you could have, at that point, I could have gone straight into 3D sketching. I didn't need to stop the sketch and then create another. Oh, okay. Sketch. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I have a question. So when you showed us the first method where you did the circular pattern on the fa the two faces, you did not sketch the top and bottom square profiles, but you were still able to patch them. But you told me when on ours, the reason I, I couldn't patch it was because I didn't redraw those squares. So I'm a little confused. I think he drew the triangles, which inherently drew, redrew the squares. Yeah. So but, when I, at that point, Ed, what I did was, uh, let me go back. See, when I did these yeah. triangles, yeah, I, I actually went back over the bottom line and the top line. Right. But then when you, when you patched it, you were able to select the full square on the top and bottom planes. And the, the was square was, two point. sides of the square was still gray. Oh, that's what I, that's what I was wondering about. Let me try to go back. Okay, let's go back here. So I'm here. I created this. And then I finished the sketch. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. Because this is its own, that was its own sketch. So that's already a profile. Does that make sense? Like that, this bottom was its own sketch. This top here was its own sketch. The problem occurs when I went into 3D sketch. So now I'm in a whole new sketch. And if I just take this line and go down here, like this, and yeah, I finished I, that You haven't sketch. closed that profile there. Okay. Right. So Got this it. isn't, this was created as its own. And so was this one. Okay. Yeah. I'm less confused now. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. Anyone else? Any other questions? All right. Good. Is there any reason you just couldn't have started in 3D Sketch? And then you, wouldn't have, then you wouldn't have had to worry about having any uh, mm -hmm. uh, standalone sketches like what Ed had. Yeah, you could you could approach it. I mean, you could like make a square and then make, uh, I could have done a line straight up. Um, which uh, Or you could have even just made a uh, an isosceles triangle at an angle, right? right? And yeah. then... Yeah, made one triangle, pattern it. Yeah, and then do the circuit. So yeah, you could definitely do it. Um, this is sort of originally just how my mind kind of thought about it. Because uh, as I'm approaching, I'm thinking, okay, we've got two squares on one on the top, one on the bottom. They're just kind of faced different way. One's rotated. Um, but yeah, if I was to go back, I could... Uh, attempt this all in one 3D sketch. I think that's that's doable. I guess the, the important lesson here, I, get, I mean, you just have to remember when you do go into 3D sketch, it doesn't really remember the other sketches that you have. It sounds like you have to trace right. over. Unless, yeah. unless you create those all in that same sketch, in that 3D sketch, yeah. Because once you go into a new sketch and you start 3D sketching, it doesn't bring in those sketch lines to be part of that profile. Oh, okay. So actually, if, if, if he hadn't finished those sketches, but we just stayed in. Right. That thing. Okay. Okay. That makes more sense to me. Yeah. I think, you know, maybe there is one more approach, um, sort of combination of these two. Mm -hmm. What if you um, extruded each square from top, from the bottom to the top and the top one to the bottom, then you basically get the same thing as the woodworking group had. And then we could just chop the corners as a pattern. Let me try to see if I understand what you're saying. Okay, man. So if I create a uh, a rectangle here, and then you're saying go ahead and create another. So follow it the same way, do an offset. Point. Yeah, the same way. All right. So we'll go up 200. Create that sketch here. Uh, rectangle. Same thing. And I'll just go ahead and rotate this. Yes. Uh, let's put this here. 45. And I'll just leave that as is. I won't worry about constraining it. Okay, so now I've got these two. You're saying go ahead and extrude this one up all right, the way? The, all the way to the top one, if to, to object. 
Oh, uh, I won't go to average. Let's go to 100 because it's a it's a sketch. And then take this one and uh, yes, go down. And um, am I doing this as a uh, just a new, I guess a join maybe I don't know. Okay, so let's do oops one negative two hundred here. What if we do? Oh, we, this is interesting. Okay, I'm just gonna. Um, so join. Yes, I get now this. Chop the corners. Will we get the same result? If I chop, like, take a corner here. I Can guess I it won't do that now. No, sorry. I, I guess I'm missing the genius genes of those kinds. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's cool. I mean, sometimes you just got to sketch it out to see where, where it can go. Yeah, but this will give you this shape. Looks like you got the start of a really good cookie cutter. Yeah, yeah. And shell that out and make some nice cookies. This is how good ideas are formed. Just yeah. <laughs> just keep following it and you'll hit genius in no time. <laughs> Lucky mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. All right. Let me stop that share. Um, yeah. Feel free if anyone wants to try doing the whole thing in one sketch. Um, go ahead and uh, experiment with that. Yeah, I'll get right back to you on that. <laughs> Nice. All right. Good. What'd you guys think of that challenge? It was, it was yeah. a good one. We learned some stuff. I, I like working in surface and I, at some point I'd like to maybe learn a little more about the sheet metal environment as well. Yeah. Cause I think there's some, you know, some of the ways you can fold and unfold things would be useful. Yeah, as and I tried last week, it's a challenge in the sheet metal environment. That was fun. All right, with that, let's jump into show and tell. Let's see some of the designs this week. What do we got? Not all at once. So. It's got to have to have something. There he goes. So I do have one thing. So this, um, you've seen this before, that spool holder that's behind my shoulder you're asking about. I've, I've been spending the last, most of the last week actually trying to, model something like this to be more parametrically driven. And actually Prusa just had a, um, their latest contest that just ended was uh, for wall hooks or wall mounted stuff. And unfortunately I, my parametric design, although it was close, wasn't quite there. So I didn't get it submitted in time. Mm. But, but the one thing I was gonna point out, I had mentioned that super lube oil that I used on the threads. Sorry, this is camera's funky, it's focusing, but you can see how shiny that still is. And it was all rough. Like I actually hit it with a little sandpaper um, because it was a little too big, but I put that lube on there and this it spins really great. Um, but anyway, I, I will be posting this fairly soon. I think I've got my parametric modeling down. So when you change parameters, it doesn't break the timeline. So I will share a link when I get that up. But this is actually, um, pretty handy if you ever need to hang a spool on the wall and, or you want to use it either to distribute filament or hang a garden hose over it. Um, it works pretty good. So, and the threads are back way back, you, you know, last year when we were, I was screwing around with broom handle threads. I learned a lot about threads and nice. Yeah, it works good. And how, how are you connecting the other part to the wall? So I've actually, this is part of what I was working on this week too. So I made these, little wall mount brackets with a little angle. All right, yep. And then I modeled, I don't have one in front of me, but I modeled a piece, this is for a coat hook, mm -hmm. um, but I have a similar piece that then this will screw into with cap okay. nuts to hold it, which is what you see on the wall behind me, if I can stop moving and keep yeah, it in yeah. focus, so. And is that, is that based off from the, the slat um, design that you were making? Cause you had the similar, like, yeah, it's, it's all part of the same ecosystem, I guess. I'm trying, I'm trying to come up with you nice. know, different ways to use this mounting system. Um, yeah, I definitely, and, I like the, the spool holder approach. Cause I've been trying to think of, of ways, that, especially in our maker space to have them. Cause I feel like, um, you know, rather than just in boxes or somewhere to have them display, cause you can even do like some cool patterns with that and make it more right. like a wall art, like a functional wall art 
um, with it. Well, and I was thinking, I actually, I just picked up the $100 Ender 3 at Micro Center uh, nice. a few days ago. And, um, you know, I know that's a Bowden setup like my CR10 was before I changed it to direct drive. And I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to like having the spool mounted, you know, on the wall so I can feed it sideways into the printer. Um, yeah. With my direct drive, I tend to come more from the top down. Yeah, that's a good idea. And changing it is so easy. You're just unscrewing it and putting another right. filament in. So right. nice. Yeah, because it's a lot better than sort of another approach I had was like take a, it's like a piece of pipe and then have it on two hooks. Because then trying right. to remove one filament, just like you got to take the whole thing apart. Right. One, so. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, post that to uh, yeah when you get that all done. Um, definitely. Yeah, hopefully time. this week I should uh, put a little more spit and polish on it, and then it'll be ready to post. Nice. And what was that substance you used to smooth the thread? It is this. If I can hold it still, it's called Super Lube, and this is their synthetic oil. They also make a grease that I've used for like lubricating the the ball screws and stuff on my printer. But this is really viscous, and it only takes a couple of drops, and it works really well. And I, it, I can't remember. It was under ten bucks for the bottle, and I think it's going to last a long time. Brilliant. Many thanks. Yeah, I actually I ordered one of those after you posted that. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, Michael. Looks like you had something. It's a, <laughs> it's a board game, Tetris game that topples hmm. so you you play and you build and you try to make sure that it doesn't topple over <laughs> Wait, you so are you holding things. it just like that as you're I, playing no 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 so you put it flat on the table but i can't okay. show you that and then you would um uh, you would have two different colors so two or two players and then you can okay. um and it will sort of you know the as you're adding more weight to one side, it it will of course go like that, and mm -hmm. <laughs> eventually it'll fall. <laughs> it's just something. The winner is the one the who can place the moles without toppling it. Yep, that's the game. So I thought that was kind of cool. Nice. Almost like Jenga, but you're adding pieces instead of uh, pulling them out. Yes, <laughs> that's cool. I thought cool. that was cute. Wait, did you come up with that game, or is that like a? a I saw it online somewhere, and. Uh -huh. I'll, and then I have to say, though, printing these with zero yeah. support worked out really well. Yeah, and they look good. They uh, look really good. So nice. there you go. Cool. Cool game. So you just start by balancing that on the arc at the bottom on a table. Like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just balance right there. If, I don't even have anything. Do I have, a, do I have my phone here? Yeah, I do have my phone. Sure, okay. so. Nope, that's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. All right. Cool. And then, uh, there you go. Steady hands, nice. It's gonna fall now. Yeah. Seems and then when you put them over here, seems like some, something that make anything. What I forget his name. What's his name, Ed? Uh, Devin. He did that. It tippy, seems like tippy something tree, Devin would make. It. Yeah. Tippy yeah. Tree. Cool. All right, anyone else? I did end up making my wife a birthday card. <clears throat> here it is here. Except uh, when she turns this here, where? <clears throat> it pops open and a little back opens up and all some confetti falls out. <laughs> and then it's got a little saying on there. Wow. You've been sitting on that all this time? Sorry. That's really cool. That yeah, hiding like, that. You blow us all out of the water with that. There's not much to not much to it. The gears are pretty simple. I mean, it's not again, not much to it. So wait, let's look at that mechanism again. So you turn the gear and does it uh does it like release a latch that opens up the top? Yeah, a little latch there. But wait, it's sprung up though to release the confetti. So is there a spring there? Like, is there's yeah, there's two, there's two oh, springs. There we go. Okay. Cool. You downplay that, but we sure love to see exactly how it all works. Uh, yeah. Two springs like that. that are just there. They just stay in. Uh huh. 
And then the little latch. Oh. And not much to it. <laughs> That's very cool. So did you give it to her yet? Yeah, I gave it to her. Yeah. She like it? No, she thought it was horrible. <laughs> she threw it back at you? <laughs> well, we it wasn't at our house, so the confetti going all over the place didn't affect <laughs> Nice. Oh, that's cool. That's a fun one. Nice. Although now it started me to look. She wants me to, for her friend, she wants me to build a puzzle box. So now I'm looking into puzzle boxes. There are some pretty cool puzzle boxes out there. All right. They're pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a whole world in itself. Um, cool. Anyways, that's it. Nice. Very cool. All right, who wants to top that? <laughs> Trevor, how's the telescope coming? Oh, you're muted. That's, there you go. that's the that's the plywood version. Um, I spent too much time with the NHS this week, but that's going to be made in the acrylic, and everything will be honky dory. He says. Nice. Okay. It's, it's getting on. And you just those are you just glued the plywood there into into so place. The I see there's like a snap fits into. Fits into yeah, hold that up again. The plywood. The, I want to see the construction of it. Um. um Great. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you've got the holes there. Where it's, it looks like you it snap fits, but are, are you also using glue? Uh, yes, the proper version is using a solvent. And this is what I was saying a couple of weeks ago, trying to administer the solvent in a, in a, a, a metered way is a nightmare. Right. Oh, I That's thought you were only using that with acrylic. So you're also using that same solvent with plywood? No, 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 no. This, this is a plywood version, a, a cheap way of testing things are working. Oh, uh, okay. You're just testing it. Well, this is going to get thrown away. <laughs> gotcha. I, I made this. This was, um, let me spotlight myself here. Um, so I did a YouTube video on this. This kind of reminds me actually of the, like the bottle opener thing that, so get a better grip. So this is a, it's one of the filters we have in our faucet. And I replace these every few months, but the way you open it is you, you just basically have to twist this off. And after a few months, it gets really tight in there. So I had a really hard time trying to get it off. So I just, whoops. Get that. So I 3D printed this thing. Basically, uh, if, if those of you haven't seen the, the video, yeah, I just do a quick Fusion 360 design to kind of follow this, um, this pattern here. It's, it's a triangle, but they're, you know, it's got like a little arc to it on each side. So where this just fits um, right over that, just to give me more leverage and was able to then come in and just unscrew this off. So one of those quick 3D printed issues. Uh, those are great because it's like, oh, I have a problem to solve. Of course, my mind goes straight to 3D printing and it's like, yeah, let me, let me um, you know, Go ahead and uh, make a video out of it. So it's like kill two birds with one stone. I thought the approach you took to figure out the curve was really interesting because I wouldn't have thought of the way you did it. That was actually pretty cool. I forgot already how I did uh, that. You did a spline, like a three-point mm -hmm. arc, and then you measured from the center down oh, yeah. the thing, and then you lowered it to that spot, which was That's right. pretty cool. Yeah, using a pair of calipers, I measured how... How deep that the measurement to the arc. Yep. All right. Anyone else have any projects? Larry, how's the Model T coming? Uh, kind of slow since I was on, you know, kind of medical leave here for the past few weeks, hmm. but I'm back to it. Now I'm just struggling with, I've got a lot of finishing to do, painting and spar urethane, and it's mm -hmm. too cold. It won't, yeah. it doesn't work right. So, Gotcha. Um, I did get some parts sandblasted and uh, it's coming along. I bought a new stapler so I can do the upholstery better. All right. Turns out most, most staplers you buy at local box stores are junk. Mm. So you got to get a good stapler. 
All right. It's key to upholstery. Get a good stapler. No, it is. A good sewing machine, good stapler, and a steamer. And a steamer. Okay. Cool. Well, all right, guys. That's it. Looks like that's it. So you guys enjoy the week. Hopefully, the warm weather will be coming pretty soon so you don't have to put back that uh, snow blower, Larry, <laughs> and start painting. It's a risk putting it away early. Yeah, there you go. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Keep see those everybody. projects coming. Yeah, take care. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.